appreciation for the fellow. Oh, another tremendous atmosphere here at the Millennium Stadium. Another big crowd, around 60,000, I'm sure. And for the last time in this competition, we will see the hacker performed by New Zealand, led by their skipper, Tane Randall. is going off everywhere then lots of supporters for both teams here tonight so four changes apiece in the two lineups one behind and three up front for the All Blacks Justin Marshall returns at scrum half looking for a big performance after a disappointing tournament by his high standards Mews and Hammett in the front row and Royce Willis in the engine room are being asked to provide fresh impetus to the forward efforts South Africa's enforced changes come on the wings, where Polsa and Ter Blanche replace the injured Keza and Rousseau. And at number eight, where Andre Foss comes in for Bobby Skinstad. Henry Honeyball, so cruelly forced out of the South African effort by injury, finally steps onto the World Cup stage proper for his final international appearance, after Yanni de Beer volunteered to step down. Nice touch. Peter Marshall from Australia is our referee tonight, aided by Wayne Erickson and Jim Fleming. Henry Hannibal, who will continue at club level with Bristol after finishing with South Africa today. They really have missed his generalship. And we might well see a different style of play from the South Africans tonight with Honeyball in the number 10 position. Jeff Wilson at fullback has said he won't be playing in any more World Cups. This is one song on this stage. Waiting then to kick off. The South Africans get the game underway. The first match played, would you believe, on a neutral venue between these two countries. Every game up to now played in either New Zealand or South Africa, including, of course, that epic final in the 95 World Cup, won by the Springboks 15 12 after extra time. Field just bounces nicely for Wilson and back to Percy Montgomery. This time finds a good touch. Now, I suppose the big question, Scott Hastings, really which of the sides are really going to be up for this? Well, it looks from the early play at the moment that uh, we just want to see the team settle down first and foremost. Huge amount of pride in this particular game. Both teams wanting the win. And it'll be interesting for the first 20 minutes whether they throw caution to the wind and just use the boot or whether they go open. Mark Hammett is the new man at hooker for New Zealand. Looking for an improved effort in the line-outs after the semi-final. And it's taken by Norm Maxwell. Area of great concern for the All Blacks. Disrupted by the French who competed against them very strongly, particularly in the second half. The All Blacks still keeping it, the mall moving forward. Looking for the low body positions as usual. Ball finally there for Marshall to Mertens. Mertens also wasn't really at his best on Sunday, having come back from injury. And that kick easily taken again by Percy Montgomery. In fact, it was kicked then into the New Zealand half by the left winger. In fact, Ted Blanche, Stefan Ted Blanche, 24 year old from Natal. Again, the throw at the lineup will be for New Zealand. Maxwell and Royce Willis, their main jumpers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Willis.
this that time. Standing in the number two position in place of Robin Brook there tonight. Remiem setting it up. Peter Muller as ever strong on the tackle. This is more like it. What a great sight. Keith Mews. Now New Zealand want this ball back quickly. The switch. Not a good one. Cullen under some pressure. Rather a loose throw out to Umanga. No chance at all for the winger that time. Well, very uncharacteristic play there from New Zealand there. First of all, Kronfeld given a loose pass, and then another loose pass there from Cullen. Umaga had no chance to get that ball, and as a result, they've conceded uh, a lot of territory there. South Africa's throw in on the halfway. This is the 54th game played between these two nations. New Zealand with 26 victories, South Africa 24 and 3 drawn. From the first throw, that's well taken by South Africa going just across field for the moment looking to straighten it up as Durant comes in on the burst and tidy ball again though both sides looking for a bit of more control Honeyball Wilson happy to let that ball go over his head and finally decides the touchdown for the dropouts. Mertens again goes long. This time does go out to Montgomery. Really does have tremendous power. Well, tremendous play there by South Africa. Van der Wester, he went for the longer pass to Montgomery. He knew Montgomery had the left boot there and found a great touch there on the New Zealand 10-yard line. Just Van der Best Hazen, questions too about his future. A link with Rugby League in Australia has been mentioned. So here's the view of Mark Hammett. Thorn in the middle. It's number eight, Randall, the skipper, and good ball for New Zealand. Cullen, Wilson, beautifully back inside, with Cullen unable to hang on to the ball. Referee Marshall plays a good advantage for South Africa. And the ball opens it out. Under Best Hazen is the man who finally straightens. Mark Andrews takes it on. Polsa to Ted Rodge. Bumps off the tackle. Best attacking opportunity of the game so far, surely. But uh, there's a turnover. Cullen finally gets it away under pressure. But that's superbly taken again by Montgomery. Not a good kick, though. Straight to Manga, who's popped up on the left. And the support from the All Blacks is good this time. Referee Marshall happy with that. A lot of bodies went to ground. Manga pumps up in the ice at half position, makes a mess of it though. But the ball just not forward. Two knock ons. So referee Peter Marshall will bring them back for the first one. Well, it was interesting the first couple of minutes. It was all a kicking game now. It's just suddenly opened up. Electric play here. Here's Umaga with a quick K chip over there, but well charged down there by Erasmus. He's had a great competition, but Mertens then goes back to clear up. Free kick awarded by Peter Marshall against the South Africans. Mertens with it quickly. Up with the bomb. Montgomery outside his 22, plenty of time though to take the ball, sets it up. And Honeyball doesn't get a great deal of distance with his kick that time. Henry Honeyball, 33 years of age now from Natal. And South Africa really have missed him. So Mark Hammett again preparing to put into the lineup, winning his fifth cap tonight. Man from Canterbury. 
Long towards Thorne again at the back. A bit more discipline about the New Zealand line-out so far. And the loose ball is there again. That was Fenter, I think, in quickly for South Africa. Mertens from the scrum half position. Polter is now popped up on the left wing. Wingers swapping positions at will so far in this game. Cullen to Mertens. Voss happy to let that ball bounce to Montgomery. Straight this time to Cullen. Hasn't had a great deal of space in which to move in this World Cup so far. What a great runner he is given the chance. Terrific running by Christian Cullen. But again, the All Blacks fail to maintain possession. Just a little knock on. But some magic from Christian Cullen. We haven't seen too much of him in this competition, but Cullen is such a silky runner. Look at this step off the left foot and then off the right. He finds the gap and then explodes into pace. Good cover tackling, though, from Muller. Scrum again, then two New Zealand. Their three-quarter line split. Mertens is left and Cullen is right, but Peter Marshall not happy with that. They have to go down again. Keith Mews, new man on this side of the pack, beefing up the New Zealand effort, certainly, but that's going to be a big battle in the scrum. Randall picks up with support from Thorne. From field number seven, as ever, hovering around there. Craig Dowd, number one, assigns the feet were necessary, the boots were necessary to try and release that ball. Man who can operate on both sides of the front row, switching today for the first time in this competition to the loose head side. Quite a battle between these two front rows. Well, there's a penalty against the South African front row. Going in illegally on the angle. So the decision is to go for goal. Here we hear this, the front row is actually, Ventner's actually broken up, but it was apparently for driving in there. So a very straightforward first attempt for Andrew Mertens. Strikes it beautifully. First one then to New Zealand. They lead by three points to nil. They played some ten and a half minutes in the first half. ball then waits to restart gives his forwards time to get up there Royce Willis not first hands on it for New Zealand but he knocked it on on the best Hazen and that's out to Erasmus big strong flanker and men on both sides for use van der best Hazen decides on the little kick and the mark called there by Tana Umanga Marshall, in the end, no option but to kick there. Oh, a good one, though. Montgomery! Oh, yes! Needed a bit of luck, Percy Montgomery, for his first points in this World Cup. But that was a beautifully struck effort. A oh, wonderful strike here. Look at him teeing up the ball. All of 45 metres. And look at that, a little bit of assistance. He'll say it was topspin. The topspin certainly took it over, but great take. Look at the hands open there. Positioned himself. His head was down. Oh, that was good. Superb action. Well, that has stung the All Blacks immediately from the kickoff. Maxwell knocked back in the tackle well by the box. And in fact, I think there might well have been a little knock forward there from the New Zealander. Scrum to South Africa. So quite an advantage there from the Springboks. Really huge pack. 
looking to open up immediately then Muller from deep inside the 22 they have to be careful and it does in fact break on the all black side Wilson big hit on him that time by Kronowato but the possession is here again my word there are some big tackles going in there Again, the All Blacks looking to drive in low in these positions. Mertens goes for the drop goal. <laughs> Referee might well have decided that was an accidental offside. The uh, All Black couldn't get out of the way of that drop kick by Andrew Mertens. Knocked on anyway by the All Blacks. He smooths Manos Durant. And the penalty, the free kick anyway, goes to South Africa. And as again, it's Robbie Fleck. Such a pacey man once given the half break. Taken on by Drotska, the hooker. And the Springbok, uh, the New Zealand hands rather in there, preventing the Springboks from getting that ball away. Over the top two. So here's a chance then, although the angle is rather tight, for Honeyball to send New Zealand back into their 22. Such a good controller of a game. Tends to play a lot flatter as well than many other South African outside halves recently, particularly Yanni De Beer maybe in this competition. Plenty of options then for South Africa in attack. First of all, it's the battle for possession in the line-out. Trotsky. Again going to the back towards Foss. Now South Africa looking to roll this on. Isolated that time though. Man is turned in the tackle, but there's an offside anyway. The New Zealanders not going behind the last foot. Well, Peter Marshall was quite right there. Look at Dowd, he's never on side there. He comes in from sideways on an offside position, takes Van der Wessies, and Van der Wessies doesn't have an opportunity to move the ball away. South Africa into the lead for the first time. Building on the drop goal by Percy Montgomery. And after 17 minutes of play in the first half, it's the Springboks now then who lead by six points to three. Both sides still really looking for a proper pattern in this game. Mertens again giving his forwards every opportunity to get back there. Eremia now straightening up. Honeyball in strongly as he does with his tackling. This time, New Zealand not releasing the ball. And Royce Willis, biggest man, certainly the heaviest man in the New Zealand party. And good kick then up to the New Zealand 10 metre line. So the South Africans calling some changes, putting Van der Westhuizen in the lineup for the moment. Otto, Van der Westhuizen to Honeyball, coming for a very flat position again. Razi Erasmus, good linking play by Penta, and that's offside. Again, the referee deciding it's accidental. Well, Venter has actually been my man for the South Africans in terms of the way he's played throughout this tournament, but a hint of a knock-on there, unfortunately, which uh, resulted in New Zealand getting this scrum. Randall just clearing the ball for Marshall to get it away to Mertens. Drives the kick downfield, but again the chance for Montgomery. Sits up nicely, though, for Mertens. Looking to probe for space on the far side, but Honeyball had done well. Bond couldn't take it. Out of play. 
And the South Africans don't think it heard the whistle. Went through on Randall, certainly. Well, they must have had a few uh, bits of cloth in their uh, ears there, but uh, here we see it again. The covering thorn comes across. He's out of touch. But look at that. One, two, three of the South Africans. They're right up in the face. So it's Drotka's turn then to throw into the line outs. Andrews, number five, in the shortened line for him. Beautiful ball off the top for Van der Westhuizen. Once again, it's Fenter coming in powerfully in good second phase ball. Honeyball switches it. Lovely piece of dancing that time by Robbie Fleck. Honeyball. Wilson underneath it, though, as the challenge came in on him from Ter Blanche. The crowd not happy with that. Well, I think with Jeff Wilson, they're looking for a little bit of a medal there. He seemed to play that one on, on the ball with a chip forward. Wilson had it well, well covered. Here's the tackle there. It's man and ball, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think Wilson's just playing a wee bit to the crowd and the referee. Wilson safely gets his kick then into touch from the mark. Terlanche wearing 11, figuring at the moment on the right wing for South Africa. And Brayton Pulser on this side of the field. This time then, Drotska will throw in to a fuller line. Otto takes it beautifully. Support from Durant. Once again, it's Razi Erasmus showing his strength. Van der Vestesen again with options. Hannibal with a straight run. Oh, almost space there for the skipper. Now he can go again. Referee playing an advantage again to the All Blacks from the knock-on. Neither side able to finish things off at the moment. Now here's Umanga. Straight to Montgomery. Down in the position where Umanga had come from. Intelligent kick by the fullback. It's claimed by Foss at number eight. Honeyball. Erasmus. And South Africa look to attack from deep. Black couldn't quite take it. That sort of summed up the game really at the moment, promising so much, but uh, neither side able to deliver. Well, it's good defence from both sides. Duran Waits. Marshall. Nasty ball for Mertens. Charge down. Great chance for Muller. Now the bounce just wouldn't go his way. Eremia in the end tidies up for New Zealand. Still problems. But in fact, I think it was Erasmus who was offside there. Well, Peter Marshall a bit sharp in the whistle there. There seemed to New Zealand could have got away with that one, but uh, he pulled it back and Martins has put down a great kick there. Here's Martins here. The ball goes up there, but look at him. He has the, he's charged the ball down. Uramia covers up. He tidies the ball up. There's Tane Randall over the top of the ball. Now, this is where the ball goes open here. Off to Mwaga, but the whistle had gone, but there was wide open space there. And the All Blacks then looking to put a concerted move together. Again, the man on the ground penalised for holding the ball. Mertens is successful though with his penalty shots. So the sides are level again then after 25 minutes. Six points all. All the South Africans so far look more likely to get on the try sheet. But it's Hammett again for New Zealand. Really looking to get a pattern back into their play, the All Blacks. There's some space here for them. Switch back inside. Things not just coming off for the moment for the All Blacks. 
Randall gets that ball away. Fenton, number seven, in very strongly again for the South Africans. Now Umanga. Cullen, the long pass. First touch for Lomu. Took four men to bring him down. Kronfeldt in support, couldn't quite take the ball though. Again, Peter Marshall looking to play an advantage to South Africa. And it's a good one. Pulsa. Little kick over the top, not a bad one. Another hack through. He can move this boy. Great chance. Pulsa. Still a chance. Yes. Brayton Pulsa with his fourth international try. Scored three on his debut against Italy. Well, he did well there, didn't he? Well, this guy's got serious gas. Look at the tip off the left foot. Beats Umaga for the ball. Chips on. And has the presence of mind to just stroll through. Using his left foot well. And look at this. It looks as though he's not going to score. Pops the ball over. Good footballing skills here. Has the presence of mind to keep his eye on the ball. Stays on his feet. He could have gone to deck there. But look at this. Keeps his eyes on the ball. Picks it up and over the line. Good play. He'll enjoy that one. Honeyball then, looking to add the extra points. And South Africa look as if they might take charge of this game. Beautifully struck again by Henry Honeyball. South Africans looking stronger and stronger. Well, the turnover actually came from Josh Kronfeld's drop ball. The turnover was there. Pulse there. He knew the space was there. Chip through, uses his left foot well. That's a great try. Christian Culler not able to gather the ball there. Palsa pounces on the ball. South Africa well in the lead now. 13 points to six to South Africa. Otto takes it from the restart. Couldn't though stay on the field. In to touch. Bruno Otto from Northern Transvaal. Two metres of him, six foot seven. Two good line-out jumpers for South Africa in the second row, posing big challenge for the duo from New Zealand, Royce Willis at the front and Norm Maxwell in the middle. But that's one well off the top by New Zealand. Eremia looking to bring in Lomu, but it's Black again, and he's quick. Fenter, again the man in supports. Kick over the top by Honeyball, easy this time for Wilson. It's called for the mark anyway. Didn't seem to be quite sure whether he'd called for the mark or not. Well, he was certainly surprised at that one. Obviously, a wee signal to the referee there from Wayne Erickson, the touch judge. But Wilson's got a second bite of the cherry and sticks it down the line there, but misses touch. Tulsa inside his own 22. Links up with Percy Montgomery slice that time off the outside of his left boot yeah interesting to see 58 percent of the time spent by the south africans in the new zealand half they really do look as if they might be taking a grip of this game 13 points to six almost half an hour played the three wanting to new zealand to get on with it Again, this good ball. Willis comes round on the peel. Now Eremia to Marshall. Again, though, with Peter Muller to the fore. The South Africans are very quickly indeed in the tackle. Now it's Umanga. Mertens needs to kick. Don't get it over the top. Mert Hammett it was originally in good support. Now Lomu straightens it up. Ball is there quickly for New Zealand. But because there'd been two knock-ons, referee Peter Marshall has to give the first one. Marshall defeats. Lomu poised to come in from the left wing. Bumps off the challenge. Randall going in to help him get the ball back. Mertens. 
Cullen. Fleck that time with the tackle on his opposite number. Again, it's the Springboks who are penalised, not releasing the man. So a little bit of indiscipline, giving the chance for New Zealand to get back into this game. Again, he struck it beautifully. Excellent place kicking again then by the New Zealand number 10 to the delight of his fans and the South African lead is reduced to four points. Stoker removed from the pitch. As Hannibal then waits to restart. Some six and a half minutes to go of normal time at the end of this first half. Hannibal's kick this time has gone straight to Marshall. Looked to be coming back into form in the quarter final against Scotland, but then dropped for Byron Callahan. News showing great strength, the man from Otago. He's one of the first choice front row before this tournament. Hands in again at the ruck from the spring box. Going in the wrong side too, I think. So here's a chance for Mertens to get the All Blacks into a possible attacking position. No great length again with his kick. Andrew Mertens takes it up to halfway. But it'll be his hooker, Mark Hammett, to throw into the line-out again. And the African coach, I'm sure, pretty happy with things so far. But the possession is there again for New Zealand. Jeremia setting it up in centre field. Options both ways for Marshall. And the third one down the middle. Intelligent play by the second row, Norm Maxwell, but the kick has gone straight again to Poulter. Shown his pace already in this game. Just taken down that time, though. New Zealand, though, not releasing the man. Holding on to him, not allowing him to play the ball. It doesn't look as if the New Zealanders have recovered from that traumatic spell in the second half against France at Twickenham. Hannibal, in the meantime, has sent them down again to their own 22. Trotsky waiting to put into the lineup there. Mark Andrews, five. Otto, four. The main men for him. Venter at the back. Now Otto. Erasmus into Drotsky. Van der Hazen. Almost a gap there for him. News just got hands to him. Again, Peter Marshall playing an advantage to the box. Brings them back for the penalty. Ruben Thorne, the flanker. The man penalised. Taking the man out, I think, away from the ball. So there's a chance then for Honeyball to increase the lead again. So pretty successful return to first team action for Henry Honeyball. This eminently kickable too for the South African outside half. Honeyball makes no mistake. So with just about three minutes to go to half time. South Africa's lead is again seven points thanks to the indiscretion of Reuben Thorne. 16 points to nine to South Africa. Beautifully taken again from the kickoff by South Africa. Rasmus in there. Five minutes left in this first half. Lovell 
to Wilson. In the end, decides on the long hoik downfield. Montgomery still inside his own 22. So he can go for touch. Get some distance again as ever on his kick. Not that he was totally happy with it, I don't know by the look of it. So we're back again then, right on halfway. Just under five minutes in total to go at the end of this first half. Tim Fleming from Scotland, the touch judge in the background. Considered one of the favourites at one stage for the final. New Zealand again rolling it on before releasing the ball. Mertens. It's landing outside the 22. Challenged by Cullen on Montgomery. There's a chance for the All Blacks here. Marshall finally gets it away to Mertens. Horn. And it just held up. Surely should have released it wider again. But there are still opportunities here for New Zealand. Cullen drops it in short for Eremia. This time it's Umanga. Again, the tacklers in well for South Africa, but again Peter Marshall was waiting for the advantage. Offside this time against the centres, the South African centres. So another chance then for New Zealand to get back into this game. 16 points to 9 to South Africa. Now it's 16 12 to South Africa. As Andrew Mertens keeps up his 100% effort this evening. And the West Hazen, the South African skipper, okay again though. Well, New Zealand have been clawing their way back just at the time when it looked as if the South Africans might break away. Just the four points in it then. We're in the second minute of injury time at the end of this first half. Paulson. Lucky he had plenty of time after that slip. And Montgomery again with the safe touch. So New Zealand clawing their way back, as I say, into this game. One more opportunity, is there? For the All Blacks? No. The All Blacks guilty of leaving the lineup and then looking to rejoin it again. So it's Trusker, the hooker, from the tap penalty for South Africa. And the West Hazen gets it away to Honeyball. One fell through on him, but gets in the kick. All ricocheting in all directions. Off a black hand, first of all, though. Scrum to South Africa. And still chance then, still time for the set move at the end of this first half. Some two and a half minutes played. Van der Best Dazen, Honeyball has switched. Now the kick through. Ted Blanche going up on Wilson. But an easy one in the end for the fullback to run into touch. That's the last piece of action in the first half. Still everything to play for. The kick is very much in control, apart from the one moment of genius from Britain, Pulse of the right winger. One try of this first half. At the interval, South Africa lead by 16 points to 12. Ladies and gentlemen, you are encouraged not to smoke. Everything still to play for then. These signs playing in the bronze medal position and ostensibly for seeding in the next World Cup. Australia, the host nation. Mertens gets the game underway. And Fenter immediately back in the action. Strong tackle that time by Thorne on him. And again back to the trusty left boots. Montgomery has that gone forward Mertens now allowed to continue Cullen 
taken by Andrews on halfway, setting it up then for the Springboks. Cullen in there legally, says Peter Marshall to battle for the ball. But there'd been a knock on anyway. Ball to New Zealand. Christian Cullen with just that one magic run in the first half. Mori there, no Maxwell, just hobbling into that scrum for New Zealand. Now probing the blind side. Back inside from Marshall. Again, the Springboks. In the room in that tackle position, conceding the penalty again. Andrew Mertens then working his way up towards the 600 point mark for his country. 576 before today, 588 now then. That time it's drifted wide of the post though. And in the end, Honeyball touches down. Looking for the quick one. Charge down though. Montgomery, whoa, cut the ball away brilliantly there. To Van der Vestesen, again a risky one. Your Blacks again regrouping then. Kronfeld, they're behind the advantage line though. Certainly again not really with it in this game tonight. The All Blacks conceding a penalty again. No worrying moments. Certainly for New Zealand it was Josh Kronfeld penalised there. John Hart, whose contract as New Zealand coach runs out at the end of this World Cup. Honeyball, almost from halfway then. So unlucky. Willis gets the kick. Straight throw to Andrews. South Africa up into the All Black 22. Tevlon's place come half. Now Honeyball. There are chances here, boss. Careless pass though. Intercepted by New Zealand. And it's Mews, the powerful prop, who can lead the charge then for the All Blacks. In the end, Mertens again kicking. Good one over the head of Montgomery. He does well, though, to stay in field. Just chips the ball downfield again to Mertens. Now Randall. Straightening up the attack. Montgomery had gone up. So they're a danger. There's no fullback in position for New Zealand, but Cullen again was held in the tackle. Again, Peter Marshall looked to be playing an advantage to New Zealand. Yes, he'll bring them back. Offside against the Springbok hooker, Mika Drutska. Well, Cullen had yards of space there to move the ball. He should have moved the ball there because so New Zealand were over in numbers going down that line side. There's Cullen there. He discussed it with himself there. Certainly hasn't had a happy World Cup, Kristen Cullen. Switch to his third international position in the centre. Hammocks into the line out for New Zealand. Off the top again. Mertens looking to orchestrate something here. It's Alatini, the replacement. Once again, this has been missing. In fact, it was crossing this time by New Zealand. So Montgomery can send New Zealand back again towards halfway. Another huge long kick by the South African fullback. He's getting 10 metres more than that. Well, here's Mertens, passes to Alatini, Lomo comes in short, takes out Robbie Fleck there, he runs in front of the ball, it's a penalty there. But New Zealand just aren't clicking, they're not offering enough in the backs to commit that South African defence, and they're at sixes and sevens here, and Lomo will be frustrated as well. Well, there'll be no surprise to you that Oli LaRue is again warming up as Boss goes on the drive. Run the best, Hazen. Illegally prevented by New Zealand from playing that ball. Going to ground again, New Zealand. Straight in front for Henry Honeyball. 
No mistakes. South Africa, to the delight of their supporters, increase their lead once again. Again, waiting to come on in place of Oz Durant for South Africa. He would be taken from the kickoff. And a ball down to Lomo. New Zealand, seven points adrift. Ter Blanche switched to the wind to counteract Lomo. Keith Mews. Driven across field first of all, then straightens it up. Marshall, as Lomo goes looking for work. There's a gap here. Cullen, the kick over the top for Wilson. Van der Vesthazen battling for the ball with the Kiwi centre. Scrum ball. And they go to New Zealand. As he's done on four previous occasions in this World Cup. In place of Oz Durant. Chance then for New Zealand, just a few metres out. Front pros have come up. They'll have to go down again. Marshall feeds. Randall just controlling it for Marshall. Finally just gets it away. Again, things not going right for New Zealand in midfield. The All Blacks have the ball again, though. Lomu drives in. No way, though, that ball was going to come out. They have to start again. So, which way will the New Zealand backs go here? They've gone right. Mertens, Alacini the replacement. South African tackling, pretty firm, but the possession is there again. Only Hammett's out here, though, for New Zealand. South Africa preventing the ball from coming back. Did well there, the hooker, didn't he? Well, Hammett was all out in his own there. He went into the South African forwards, and Peter Marshall time and time again told the South Africans get back from the ball, and quite rightly, he penalised them. So it's resulted again in a, a very capable position indeed. Randall Mertens that's kept the minutes. Four penalties for Andrew Mertens in the first half. That's a fifth penalty for the New Zealand number 10. So John Hart's men still hanging on in there then. South Africa's lead, just four points. Lomu from deep in the 22 again. Fearless pass, but Eremia tidies it up. Mertens, you see the strapping on his left knee there after the injury against Scotland. Montgomery again with the left boot across field, just making the touch. Percy Montgomery, actually born in Namibia, 25 year old fullback, played a lot of his rugby at centre. Now established after a miserable early season for South Africa. Pretty accurate both sides with their throwing to the lineouts. Full line again then for the All Blacks. Towards Thorn at the back. That's in to Hoff the replacement. Driven back in the tackle though by Fenter. Chance of a turnover for South Africa. Van der Vesthazen's kick. Down the line. Erasmus on it. And the skipper. Van der Vesthazen then keeping up the pressure on the All Blacks here. 
next score could well be crucial South Africa with just the one try of the game so far accurate throw though by New Zealand to Willis and all still moving so allowed to carry on and Marshall finds a safe touch back in the side Marshall because of the injury to Byron Kelleher the rules for this game as for the others in the knockout stages if the teams finish level we'll have extra time South Africa so far with the one try of the game and Fleck making the inroads Foss to Van der Westhuizen. South Africa just 10 metres out Honeyball almost a gap for him a strong running outside half it's there again for South Africa tackling again was good though by New Zealand but again Van der Westhuizen can get it away Foss couldn't get it into Paulsa and the hat clear takes New Zealand back again into the Springbok half Alicini number six the replacement South Africa have to let it go and they've done so Mora fearless play and Polsa with the kick under quite some pressure scored the try Brayton Polsa of course in the first half well, they're always looking. There's Robbie Fleck. He was the guy who set up the attack earlier on. Muller tries to pass the ball on there. Not a lot happening. And Pulsa just pops the ball down the touch there. Kronfeld not quite quick enough to cover across to counter upfield. 16 minutes played in the second half. South Africa still with just the four-point lead. Randall goes to support the jumper, almost stolen by South Africa, but Marshall gets it away to Mertens. Lommel brought in. Good support, Hoft in there too, the prop. Number 21, the replacement for Dowd. Alatini with the kick this time. It's gone straight though to Montgomery. Eyes up the options. To Pulser again. That's a long kick, will go all the way over the dead ball line. They'll have to come back for the scrum. Well, Percy Montgomery there, he tried to give the gap outside to Pulsa there. Didn't quite have the edge on Wilson, put the kick far too long. And as a result, New Zealand have been awarded the scrum on the halfway line. New Zealand looking to bring the wingers into play well we're in 26 minutes I think before Lomu had the ball at all in the first half Mertens again not really creating anything there except danger for his own side I just wonder there if Mertens is actually playing too fat to the, 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 the uh, gain line <laughs> Werner Swanepoel one for use to mask the best Hazen. He's had to go off the field for some treatments. Okay. Let's go half. Game resumes with the scrum for New Zealand. Randall switches back inside to Cronfeld this time. Andrew's going through. They'll have to come back though. Knock on. Find the South African lock. So it could be a big blow for South Africa, losing their skipper if he's off for any length of time. And the best Hazen. Swanepoel opposing Marshall for the moment then. Looking to make the tackle on Randall. Marshall bundled over. Again, good South African defence there. Marshall's always looking for the break, the half gap to release Randall back on the inside or Kronfeld. That space hasn't been quite there round first and second phase or off set piece in today's game. Peter Marshall needing some running repairs on his microphone. 
Eight point Wayne Erickson. I think it's the elastic on his shorts, to be honest with you. <laughs> Kodroska in on halfway then to Kuna Otto. Lost the ball though in the line out. Scrum to New Zealand. Brought 15 metres in by referee Peter Marshall. 20 minutes to go in the last quarter then of this game. Marshall feeds. Merton says again. Alatini is brought in the replacement. Has shown good strength. Ball lost in contact. Scrum again to South Africa. And another untypical New Zealand performance really he's got. Well that was another handling error there. Again, Cronfeld went in on Alantini. The ball was spilled forward and again lost possession there. Okay. Yeah. Swanavol feeds. Goes on a darting little run himself. Good play by the replacement scrum half into Ted Blanche. Horse the number eight, trying to get it away too. Nice the ball for Swanapol to take. Couldn't control it. Again, Peter Marshall wanting to sort out the two front rows. Isaki on this side for South Africa and Hoff the replacements for New Zealand. Marshall finally able to feed. Mertens brings in Lomu again. Two men are quickly on him. Really no pace there in that movement. Then another handling error. The twelfth in this game by New Zealand. I suppose confidence takes the blow the more mistakes you make. It was interesting watching the uh, midfield defence got their honey balls taking up both Robbie Fleck and, and Muller very, very quickly. That's putting pressure on the New Zealand attackers. And the throw passed from referee Peter Marshall asks the scrum to go down again. Post from number eight. Drives in towards the midfield defence. Quick ball in this time for South Africa. Only Rue taking it on. It's there again. No, little knock forward there. Again from a South African hand. So near and yet so far again. As far as this game's concerned. So the scrum goes down in the central position for New Zealand. Merton standing out to the right. Christian Cullen just inside him to guard him. Merton's little kick over the top this time. Sits up. No. Percy Montgomery thinking he was going to get the advantage of the bounce that time. That's the way this game has gone though. Well, the game is balanced on a knife edge here. You just wonder, it just needs another breaking pulse type of try, and suddenly the whole game will open up in the last 20 minutes here. Still everything to play for. Four points in it. South Africa leading by 19 points to 15. Space the last for Cullen and gets it away to Lomu. And the tap, a good one by Ter Blanche. That might well have been try saving tackle by the number 11 of South Africa, Ted Blanche, on his opposite number, John Alamo. Well, here's Cullen in from full back. He gives the outer space. Ted Blanche, look at him. He just goes for the ankle there. Wonderful tackle to stop the movement there. You really felt the Lomo was away up the wing there. Great tackle by Ted Blanche. Had the presence of mind to just flick that leg when he knew he was beaten for space. New Zealand again then with the ball at the line outs. Again it's good ball off the top. Mertens brings in Lomu again from the left wing. Again the tackling by South Africa was good. And the ball had gone forward anyway. And New Zealand looking to make a substitution Dylan Micker the flanker coming on for Reuben Thorne
Snooker, the man from Auckland, winning his seventh cap. Svanepoel still on the field in place of Van der Westhuizen for South Africa. Honeyball drills the kick again. New Zealand, New Zealand, number 19, Dylan Mika. The replacements coming on thick and fast. We're about to see Albert van der Berg come on for South Africa in place of Mark Andrews. Van der Berg, who actually started off this competition in the second row alongside Andrews in the game against Scotland, now replacing him. The Africa replacement, South Africa, number 20, Albert van der Berg. Hamlet's again, into the line then. Taken well by Maxwell. Rather a high ball for Mertens. New Zealand keeping it alive, albeit again really behind the advantage line. Now the chance to break it. Cullen. Randall the skipper. Switch back inside for Hammets. This is better as far as New Zealand are concerned. South Africa looking to kill it from an offside position. Peter Marshall again playing an advantage to New Zealand. Long pass to Cullen. Eremia looking to make the switch for him. Peter Marshall has to take them all the way back though for the penalty to New Zealand. Mertens once again composes himself. Five penalties for the New Zealand number 10 already in this game. This will bring his side back to within one point of the spring box. If successful, beautifully kicked again by Andrew Mertens. Well, we really do have a contest on our hands. South Africa with just a one point lead over John Hart's men. And some 13 minutes to go at the end of this game. Kick out down to Lomu. No way through there for him, though. New Zealand, though, moving over the 22, but then lose the ball in contact again. Picked up by Muller, almost created a try for South Africa. Springboks again setting it up. LaRue. Fleck. Does well to keep it alive. Gets a second chance. No, in fact, ball went forwards. Off his hooker, Nakadrotsky. Well, here's the ball here. Fleck steps off his right inside Kronfeld. He pops the ball up, but that was a judge to be knocked on. Once again, Peter Marshall has to ask the front rows to go down again. New Zealand just inside their 22. Mertens, long kick downfield. Good positioning though by Percy Montgomery. Huge ball, landing outside the 22. Knocked on by Randall. Chance for Fesahi to set it up into Penta. Great chance. Knocked forward again, though, by a springbok hand. Here's another big charge by Venter. He's my man of the match here for South Africa. There's Van der Westhuizen. He takes it on. So the all Otago front row is reunited for New Zealand. These three started off as the first choice front row in this competition. Marshall's ball looking to go into the second row's feet that time. But Mertens takes advantage with the clearance kick. Wayne Erickson not happy with that throw in from Brayton Pulser. Keeps his flag up. Well, Pulser there, he looked for the throw to Montgomery and just put a wee step into touch. Here we see in the reverse angle here, collects the ball, there's the foot, it's on the line, on the line, is over the line. Getting towards the back for Maxwell. High challenge on Cullen, 
Again makes it available though for New Zealand. It's there again for Marshall. Half a gap for him to go through. New Zealand still driven across field. Kronfels pass, then knocked down by Van der Vestesen. Polter with the kick and chase. Wilson goes back. That's comfortable then for the New Zealand number 15. South Africa waiting to bring on never more replacements in this game, wanting to give everybody a chance, I should think. Ruben Kruer and uh, Chris Rousseau poised to come onto the field. Jump back by Hofts. Marshall. Flicked away. That time by Mertens, but still pressure on New Zealand inside their own 22 if South Africa can get it. his kick charged down by Maxwell was the Erasmus threw on him there'd been a knock on again no in fact it's a penalty quickly taken by Marshall Alatini now this is better as far as New Zealand are concerned up to halfway can the All Blacks get the breakthrough in this game just one point in it but there's a ball again for South Africa Wilson out on the right wing now for New Zealand. Into Cullen, who's playing at fullback. Well, Tane Randall outside Christian Cullen there was absolutely screaming for the ball. Lomo out here, he's hardly touched the ball in this second half. He was wanting a run down the side. Ruben Kruer and Chris Rousseau coming onto the field, Ruben Kruer. And who played, of course, in 1995. Andre Vos, the number eight, has left the field for South Africa. Chris Rousseau, the hooker, we believe, still waiting to come on. And the best Hazen. On a ball, Paulser on a good angle from the left wing. It's the bit of luck, too. Ball just landing in field. So again, New Zealand having to defend on their own 22. Oliver puts him to the front. Knocked down by Willis. And the ball is there for South Africa. Erasmus brought down by Kronfeld. Fenter for once driven back in the tackle. Montgomery looking for a second drop goal. It's there. Well, this competition in a sense has been dominated, hasn't it, by dramatic drop goals. Here's another from Percy Montgomery. Well, Montgomery just thrown back into the pocket there, has the presence of mind, keeps his head down. And this time he doesn't need the assistance of the bar to pop the drop goal over. That opens up the little bit of the four-point margin. New Zealand will have to score a try in response if they're going to win this game. Four points then. The South African leads. Five minutes to go to the end of this game. Referee is happy for play to go on. Mertens to Cullen, shrugs off the one challenge, sets it up for the All Blacks. Jeremio is in there too. Now it's Kiss Muse. Otto in on the challenge with him. No way though, that ball is going to come out, says Peter Marshall. Just over three minutes of normal time at the end of this game. South Africa 22, New Zealand 18. Spreads it wide. Can they now release Lomu? Alatini cuts back inside. Support is there from Eremia. Ball knocked on by New Zealand. There's an advantage here. Paulsa decides to kick though rather than spread the ball wide. 
plenty of men out wide for South Africa. John Alomo, long distance on his kick, doesn't find touch though. Andre Fenter. Again makes it available. Just a little space for Van der Westhuizen. The kick through. Wilson's back. Wanted to keep it moving, despite the fact that he had the dropout from the 22 anyway. Two and a half minutes to go at the end of this game. New Zealand trailing by four points over South Africa. Mertens deciding he has little option, if any, but to attack from deep in his own territory. Again, there are more handling errors from New Zealand. Do you think there's a psychological hangover as well from uh, the game against France? I think there's a bit of that. Here's Cullen trying to, he's always looking, and in fact, when Cullen's moved back to fullback, he's certainly done things, but certainly New Zealand have created so much problems for themselves by putting themselves under pressure. Scrum to South Africa. Van der Westhuizen to Muller. Sits up nicely though for Wilson. Again an error. Corsa for a moment thought he was in for his second score. John Hart can hardly look. Coming to the end now, surely, of his career as New Zealand coach John Hart. Almost a minute into injury time at the end of this game. Vandenberg, number 20. Looking to keep it moving for South Africa. Honeyball. Knocked on. By the outside half. Following up his own kick. One more chance then for the All Blacks. Nick Mallett, the South African coach. Still has two years left on his contract. Expects to see that out. Randall. Then looking to bring some urgency. One more attack for New Zealand. Mertens, the long pass. Can they create some space for Wilson? Alatini flicks it back into Wilson. Kronfeld in support. Cullen again in the move. Last chance surely for New Zealand. They've lost it again though. Mertens to Kronfeld. As New Zealand look to keep their hopes alive. Two minutes of injury time played at the end of this game. The Springboks can penalised for holding on. New Zealand still have a chance with some two minutes, we believe, of injury time to play. Anton Oliver now, the replacement hooker for New Zealand. It's there again for the All Blacks. Mews up to halfway. Mika with the support. Wilson to Eremia. It's all very, very frantic out there. Can somebody exercise some control as far as New Zealand are concerned here? There's a turnover. Illegally by South Africa. Men on the ground playing the ball. Still time. Still a chance for New Zealand. Maxwell setting it up again for New Zealand. Around a minute of injury time, we believe, to play. Mews goes charging in. He's had a fine game in the, in the loose. Kiss Mews. Wilson pops up this time in the outside half position. Randall, that's okay, says the referee. Play it on. One more chance for New Zealand. Alatini just couldn't take it. Piece of the action. Second successive defeat then for New Zealand. South Africa have won the third place in the 1999 World Cup by beating New Zealand by 22 points to 18. Jeff Wilson believes this is the end of the World Cup as far as he is concerned. Is it the end of the road as far as John Hart, the New Zealand coach?